Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a 2009 sci-fi horror film, titled Pandorum. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the year 2174, overpopulation has depleted Earth's resources, so humanity builds an interstellar arc called Elysium to send 60,000 people to colonize Tannis, an Earth-like planet. Since the trip will last over a hundred years, the crew is put in hypersleep, and teams will wake in turns biennially to maintain the ship. Eight years after the mission starts, the ship receives a message from Earth, you're all that's left of us. Good luck, God bless, and Godspeed, but it's only seen by a few crew members, including Gallo. An unknown amount of time later, Corporal Bauer wakes up inside one of the hypersleep capsules, disorientated and suffering from partial amnesia. As soon as he is out and disconnects all the wires from his body, the power in the ship goes out, but luckily there is a flashlight nearby that he uses to investigate the area. All the other capsules are empty except for the one with Lieutenant Payton in it, and looking at his own helps him remember his name, but there are no other crew members around. The ship's control panel isn't working, but he does find his locker with some clothes and a picture of his girlfriend. While changing, he notices the tattoo on his arm that marks him as part of Team 5. The door to the bridge is locked with no way to open it, although there are tools on the floor and marks on its surface, indicating someone was desperate to get out. Furious, Bauer goes to hit Payton's capsule over and over, to no avail. He decides to take care of his beard next, and while shaving, the ship starts shaking before it releases Payton from his capsule. He's also disorientated and like Bauer, he doesn't remember the destination or the mission, but they do remember the training. This allows Payton to find the emergency power unit and reactivate the control panel, but when they try the communication lines, nobody replies. Suddenly, the ship starts shaking again, and they hear some noises in the ventilation shafts which Payton blames on the system rebooting itself every time there's a surge from the unstable nuclear reactor. Deciding they should find a way out of the room, Bauer climbs into the shafts while Payton guides him through the comms by looking at the maps on the computer. For a while, Bauer finds nothing interesting inside the shafts, but eventually he comes across a spider and decides to follow it until he falls against a shaft grill, where he finds the body of a fellow crew member. After some struggling in that tight space which turns out to be a boot locker, he manages to push the grill off and come out in the middle of a room, but this also means he's lost contact with Peyton. This room's door does allow him to push it open, so Bauer starts walking through the hallways to investigate and finds a woman named Nadia, who runs away as soon as he comes closer. Bauer chases after her and, as he turns around a corner, he comes across a body hanging from the ceiling. While he tries to understand what happened, Nadia takes advantage of his distraction to attack him from behind and tackle him to the ground. Threatening him with a knife, she searches through his pockets and asks him to take off his boots, but she suddenly goes away when some weird growling noises start echoing at the end of the hallway. The hanging body is taken by a group of humanoid cannibalistic creatures that Bauer is terrified to see, so he runs away as well until he gets back to the boot locker room and hides in the shafts. Returning to this location means he regains contact with Peyton, so he has to cover his communicator not to be heard by the monsters. One of the creatures enters the room and finds the body that fell from the ventilation shafts, taking it with it when it leaves. Once he's sure he's alone, Bauer talks to Peyton again and tells him what happened. He thinks they should try to contact the bridge, but Peyton doesn't think there is anyone left on the bridge in the first place, and there won't be help coming because this ship wasn't programmed to return. Bauer gets some of his memories back then, and remembers all about the planet Tannis, which he saw on TV when he was a kid. He also remembers having a lover and that the training included allowing the crew members to bring their wives, so his and Peyton's companions should be somewhere on board. He wants to go out and find them before the creatures do. But Peyton points out it would be impossible to do in a ship this big, so his priority should be regaining control of the vessel to save them all. As he looks around, Bauer finds some anti-riot guns in a closet, so he takes one with him before asking Peyton to guide him through the hallway so he can find the reactor bay and reset it manually. When he sees someone passing by, he steps back and hides while noticing his hands are trembling, which could possibly be a symptom of Pandorum, a disorder caused by deep space and emotional stress that can make a person psychotic. Peyton tells him the story of the old Eden mission, where one of the officers had a psychological breakdown and, convinced the flight was evil, he evacuated the ship by launching all the hypersleep capsules into oblivion. While chatting, Bauer continues to investigate the area, unaware that he's being followed. He finds another body hanging from the ceiling, but to his surprise, this one isn't dead. Shepard from Team 4 attacks him at first, thinking Bauer is one of the creatures, but Bauer quickly reassures him and helps him get off the booby trap. Shepard knows as little as Bauer does about the situation and refuses to follow orders, but when a bunch of creatures appears at the end of the hallway, they run away together. Bauer manages to hide, but Shepard falls on one of the traps again so the creatures start feeding on him. When Bauer tries to shoot one, the monsters finally notice him too and start chasing him until he falls from a very high platform. Suddenly, 
He's grabbed and dragged away into a locked room by another crew member, Mon, who doesn't speak English. Communication is almost impossible, but Bauer does manage to see Mon's tattoo and discovers he's from the agriculture unit, so he tells him to wait there while he looks for the reactor, since Bauer is from the flight unit and knows how to handle it. After losing contact with Peyton once more, he makes it to the cargo room, where he's attacked and overpowered by Nadia, but he's quickly saved again by Mon. He and Nadia begin a furious battle that Bauer interrupts by shooting his gun in the air, telling them they should all be working together to survive. They accept after Bauer promises them he should be able to fly the ship if he can find the reactor, so Nadia guides them to the correct way. They arrive at a door that she can open only when the reactor surges, so the creatures almost reach them while waiting. Bauer manages to keep them back with his gun long enough for them to enter the room when the surge finally hits, and he finds the place where Nadia has been surviving all this time, the embryonic chamber, where they keep the livestock and wildlife repopulation. They already lost 30% of specimens, and Nadia has lost the other four people she woke up with as well. After sharing the fact she's also suffering from partial amnesia, she shares some bugs with them to have as food. Meanwhile, Peyton continues to hit the door to open it to no avail. He also starts hearing noises coming from the shafts, making his paranoia worse. Moments later, from among the wires he sees a young man emerge, it's Gallo, who is naked and claims to come from the bridge before passing out. When he wakes up sometime later, Peyton starts asking him questions as he notices his tattoo marks him as Team 4. Gallo explains he had to kill his teammates in self-defense when they were overtaken by Pandorum, and that's why he's covered in blood. Bauer, Nadia, and Mon continue their search for the reactor and cross the hypersleep chamber, where most capsules lay empty because it's the creature's main hunting ground. Mon stays behind, watching something, and Bauer wants to look for his wife, but Nadia explains civilians aren't here, only officers. As they advance together through the room, the floor under them breaks and they fall into some sort of sewer filled with human bones. This turns out to be a good thing for them, however, because a creature arrives then and isn't capable of seeing them down there. After the monster is gone, they climb out of the sewer, only to find the monster waiting for them. It doesn't hesitate to attack them both, and while at first it keeps the upper hand, the fight turns around when Mon arrives and gets the creature off them. By working all together, they manage to kill the monster, but there is another one that has been watching them all along and now is summoning more of his kind to eat the body and attack the humans. As the trio runs away, they notice one of the capsules opening and a crew member waking up, but there's no time to save him, the creatures quickly surround him and feed on him. The three of them manage to escape and get inside a barricaded chamber where they meet Leland, the ship's cook. While he prepares something for them to eat using the water that leaks into the ship and the algae it creates, Nadia finally tells Bauer her theory, the creatures are the members of the crew that mutated into these monsters thanks to the accelerator every officer had gotten injected in them to help them adapt to the environment in Tannis, since this stuff is supposed to jumpstart evolution. Leland overhears them talking, and since he's been awake for a long time, he knows what's happened, so he starts telling the story at the same time Gala tells it to Peyton while trying to make him lose his mind. When Earth vanished thanks to some unknown catastrophe, the ship got the message that told them about this tragedy and wished them good luck. Hearing this news, Gallo lost all hope and became insane, so he killed his team and induced Pandorum and other passengers before goading them into a violent and tribal culture, then he went back into hypersleep. Bauer and the others lose consciousness as the story ends, only to wake up some moments later to find out Mon had drugged them and now he's tied them up with the intention to eat them. After stabbing Nadia, he moves to Bauer, who manages to change his mind by explaining the ship is on its final stage before shutdown and none of them will survive if he doesn't reset the reactor. Mon frees them and lends them his radio so Bauer can contact Peyton, who checks the computer memory and confirms the ship only has 47 minutes left, he also provides them a path they can follow to the reactor. As they cross the hallway, they encounter one of the creatures, but this one is very young, which confirms the monsters are reproducing. Nadia asks them not to kill it because it's just a child, but this causes the kid to run away and alert his peers. The group flees and hides into a room with all the civilian hypersleep capsules, but Bauer doesn't find his wife there and he finally remembers why, she never came, she broke up with him and that's why he enlisted in the first place. This means she died when Earth evaporated. With nothing left for him to save, Bauer starts losing hope and almost loses his sanity as well, but Nadia convinces him they need to survive and restarts a new Earth. It's then that Bauer has another revelation when he remembers Peyton's wife, Marianne. Meanwhile, Gallo continues to goad Peyton, trying to make him lose his mind and give in to Pandorum. He thinks everyone should launch themselves in the pods the same way the Eden mission did, but Peyton considers it suicide and believes Bauer can get them out of this. As Gallo's nose starts bleeding and the argument grows in intensity, he gets more violent as well. He grabs a sedative gun and threatens Peyton into launching him out in a capsule, so Peyton pretends to follow his orders only to choose hypersleep instead of launching once he is Gallo inside the pod. The team makes it to the reactor room, which is also the place where all the creatures sleep. 
When they try to cross a walkway it collapses under their feet, and while Nadia makes it to the other side, Bauer falls on a metal beam, and Maud is left holding the walkway so it doesn't drop on top of the creatures. After slowly lowering himself to the floor, Bauer covers himself with monster skin to cover his own scent and carefully makes his way to a nearby ladder. He does make it to the reactor, but his flashlight falls on his way up and wakes up the monsters, who waste no time in going after them. Mon drops the walkway, killing a good amount of them before running away while Bauer finally restarts the reactor, which returns power to the ship and kills a good number of monsters as well. The mutant leader goes after Mon to engage him in hand-to-hand -hand combat and after a very tough fight, Mon defeats it and kills it, only to find the mutant kid seconds later. He hesitates to kill it, which is a big mistake, the child doesn't think about it twice and cuts his throat open. In the meantime, Bauer and Nadia are following Leland to safety while the rest of the creatures chase them, but the cook betrays them and locks the door behind him so he cannot be caught. Now the power is back, Peyton finally manages to open the bridge door right before Gallo escapes the pod and, after some struggling, injects him with the sedative. It is then that Peyton's memories completely return and he realizes what has been going on, he isn't Peyton, he is Gallo, and the man he's been talking to was a hallucination of his younger self. Peyton had been one of the crew members he killed and since Gallo took his capsule, he thought himself to be Peyton because of the amnesia. At that moment, Leland arrives at the bridge and pretends to be a friend of Bowers, but Gallo doesn't care, he simply kills him by injecting a sedative into his eye. After they manage to force the door open and leave the creatures behind, Nadia and Bauer make it to the bridge as well, where Bauer recovers his gun from Leland's body and rushes to the computer to open the flight log, which reveals 923 years have passed since the mission started. Gallo reveals himself then and admits his lie, which Bauer had already discovered, before opening the shutters on the ship's window to show them is all black, not a single star could be seen anywhere. Having lost all hope, Gallo tries to goad Bauer into insanity as well, speaking of the lack of God and law which equals absolute freedom. However, Bauer believes in having law and order, so those words make him react and he jumps on Gallo, ready to kill him, when Nadia interrupts him with a very important discovery, there are bioluminescent creatures floating around them. They finally realize the ship landed on Tanis 800 years ago and it's now lying on the bottom of the ocean. Gallo takes advantage of the distraction to jump on Bauer and try to kill him, but Nadia comes to the rescue and they start to fight. Since she's still hurting from Leland's stabbing, Gallo easily overpowers her, so Nadia tries to get Bauer to help her, but he doesn't hear her. Now it's him the one having a hallucination, so instead of shooting Gallo, he shoots the wall, believing the mutants are coming. The shot breaks a window and water starts pouring into the ship, killing Gallo and any remaining creatures. Nadia and Bauer manage to get into one of the flooded pods, and since the air isn't enough for both of them, Bauer puts the oxygen mask on Nadia's face as the computer launches over a thousand capsules, including theirs, when it detects the emergency. Bauer and Nadia surface near a beach moments later, and together they watch all the other pods make their way up as well, which means now they have enough people with them to start rebuilding a new earth. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.